In this video, we're going to learn how to convert a decimal number to a binary number using Python. More specifically, we're going to learn how to implement the algorithm which converts a non-negative integer to its binary representation stored as a string. So we're going to follow this algorithm here, which essentially involves repeatedly dividing the decimal number by two until that number reaches zero. So for example, let's say we want to find the binary representation of 43. We'll take 43 and divide it by 2. This will give us 21 remainder 1. Where 21 is the quotient and 1 is the remainder, and 21 times 2 would give us 42, plus 1 would give us 43. Now 1 here is going to be the next digit in the binary number that we're constructing. And the quotient here, 21, is going to be used as the number in the next iteration of this algorithm. So here we'll have 21 divided by 2 and this will give us 10 remainder one. And again, one becomes the next digit in the binary number, and the quotient here 10 becomes our new number. Then we'll have 10 divided by two, which will give us five remainder zero this time. And then we just continue this process. So five divided by two is going to give us two remainder one, and then two divided by two is going to give us one remainder zero, and one divided by two is going to give us zero remainder one. And then this digit here becomes the leading digit in our binary number, and this digit here becomes the last digit in our binary number. So all together, it's going to look like this. We'll have one, zero, one, zero, one, one, where this digit here is this leading digit in the binary number, and this digit here is the last digit in the binary number. So it's been arranged from bottom to top basically. And let's recall what each digit is worth in a binary number, where this digit here is worth one, and this digit here next to it is worth two, and then this digit here is worth four, and this digit here is worth eight, and this digit is worth 16, and the last digit here is worth 32. So we'll have 32 here, let's say. If we look at it, we actually did do the conversion successfully because if we add together the worth of the digits of this number that are set to one, we'll get back 43 because we have 32 because this digit here is one. We don't have 16 because this digit is zero, but we do have eight because this digit is one. So we'll have 32 plus eight. And then we don't have four because this digit is zero, but we do have two and one because these digits are set to one. Then we have 32 plus eight plus two plus one, which gives us back 43. So we did do the conversion successfully. Let's actually implement this algorithm now. The first thing we'll do is prompt the user to enter a non-negative integer. And we'll do a little bit of user input validation to make sure they've given us a valid non-negative integer. So we'll have a while loop here with the condition true. We're going to continue this loop so long as the user has not yet given us a valid non-negative integer. We'll stop the loop using break once they do. So to prompt the user, we'll call the input function and we'll pass it the string, enter a non-negative integer. And we'll prompt the user to enter a non-negative integer. Now the string the user enters is going to be returned by the input function. We'll convert that string to an integer value using int and we'll store that into a variable called decimal. Now, if that decimal number is less than zero, then we're going to tell the user they need to enter the number again. So if the number is less than zero, we'll call print and we'll output the message integer must be a non-negative integer. Otherwise, if they did enter in a decimal integer that's greater than or equal to zero, that means it's a non-negative integer. So in that case, what we'll do is stop the loop using break. So this break is going to stop the loop in the case that the user does enter in a valid non-negative integer. And until they do that, this loop will continually prompt the user. So after this loop is done, we'll know that decimal does store a valid non-negative integer that we can convert to a binary number. Now to make the conversion, we'll begin with an empty string. What we'll binary is equal to an empty string and we're going to use the string concatenation operation to essentially prepend each digit of the binary number onto the front of the string. Then we'll use a while loop to repeatedly perform the division operations. 
of here while true, then to perform the division operations, we're going to use the divmod function because the divmod function is going to return both the quotient and the remainder. So we'll call it divmod and we'll pass it the decimal number and two. And the divmod function is going to divide decimal by two and it's going to return both the quotient and the remainder. We'll store the quotient into the decimal variable and we'll store the remainder into a variable called remainder. And notice how we store the quotient of this division operation back into the decimal variable. That's because we're implementing this algorithm here where the quotient of the previous division operation should become the decimal number in the next division operation until that quotient is zero. So down here, as this loop runs again and again, we'll be taking the quotient of the previous division operation and using it as the new decimal number in the next division operation. So the next thing to do is take this digit here, which is going to be either zero or one, and we'll prepend it to our binary number represented as a string. Well, if here binary is equal to str and we'll pass it a remainder. So remainder here is going to be an int type value, which is going to be either zero or one. Here, we're converting it to a string that's going to be either zero or one as a string. That way we can use the concatenation operation with a string. We could then have plus binary. And so here we're essentially prepending that next digit of the binary number onto the string representation of the binary number. Because remember the order of the digits, the leading digit of the binary number is going to come from the last division operation that we perform. Now what we'll check is if the quotient has reached zero. So here, if decimal is equal to zero, then we can stop this algorithm with break. Because as before, break is going to stop this loop. Next, we can output the binary number. So of here, print binary. Now, if we save the program and try it out here, we could enter in first, let's say negative 35. And we'll get here a request to enter in a non-negative integer. So we'll try 43 and we do get 101011, which is correct. So this is how we can convert a decimal number to a binary number using Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.